Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for Saturday with Stacy YouTube number 186. We have brand new product from Ducrafts. I'm very excited to bring it to you. We have it before anybody else in the US and I think we're going to have it for a little while before anybody else in the US. So I'm excited to that Dan Dan the Ducraft man got it here to us. Woohoo! <laughs> now you may have seen there are earlier versions of this. We're doing cut and emboss folders and they're just wonderful. We did them last year. They brought out I think five or six last year and we YouTube them and they've got new designs and I've got some new things to show you what to do with them and how to use them. This really is a technique based YouTube and you may want to take notes. So I'm going to stop talking and smile so you can pause me and I'm like not in this weird look. So you can get a piece of paper and pen or pencil and come back because I do think you'll want to take notes on this. Are you ready? Here's my pause face. <laughs> I don't want to blink because you always pause when you're in this weird blink. Anyway, it's a it's an exciting YouTube. I, I, I'm going to be using two different machines. I'm going to be using the Texture Boutique machine by Sizzix and I'm going to be using my Sizzix Big Shot machine. So I am going to start with the Textured Boutique machine and hopefully those of you who ha only have the Big Shot machine will hang with me for just a minute. I just want to show a simple a simple way to use these folders with that machine so that those who have a texture boutique machine and do not have a big shot machine can still have these fabulous folders and know how to use them properly. Now normally I would be doing winner winner chicken dinner right now because every YouTube we give away prizes and unfortunately something happened with YouTube and I just don't know what it was. I've contacted them because many of your comments haven't come through. I think we had over 13,000 views last week and there were very very few comments and that was on YouTube number 185. So I'm not going to pull any winners yet because that's really not fair. I want to make sure all the comments are approved and accounted for so that everybody has a fair chance to win. That means my next YouTube, I'll have winners from this YouTube, 186 and 185. That brings me to my next little tidbit of information. There will not be a YouTube next Saturday. I know, <laughs> I really thought about doing it, but I leave for CHA. CHA is the craft and hobby show that is in the United States and it's the largest craft and hobby show in, in the United States and it's where I go to buy all the fabulous product and see all the amazing product that we're going to bring to you for the next six, seven, eight months. Some of the stuff's available now, some of the stuff I'm going to be looking at won't be available until August. But I leave on Friday and I will be at the show Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. It's three days. And I'll be doing live from CHA Facebook postings many times a day. Every time I go see a vendor or a manufacturer that we do business with, I try to do a live from CHA to show you what's coming. And because of that, there's just no time for me to get a YouTube in and I'm really sorry. Now for those of you who say, but I don't, I don't have a Facebook account. That's okay. You don't have to be belong to Facebook to check us out on Facebook. Our Facebook page is a public page. That means anybody can view it at any time. You can't post a comment unless you belong to Facebook, but you can watch all the videos even if you don't have a, a Facebook username and login. It's okay, just Google Scrapbooking Made Simple Facebook and our Facebook page will come up and you can watch those live from CHAs. I do them about every hour. It's, <laughs> but you get to see some of the newest product. We always give prizes away. So I apologize in advance for not doing a YouTube next week. It's just, there's too much for me to get done in between now and then. And then I leave and, uh, and I start my live from CHA broadcast. So I hope you join me, but that means that this YouTube will be up for two weeks. <laughs> so if you come back next week and it's still 186, now you know why. All right, again, I have got an amazing YouTube. Don't forget to post your comment. That way 
You get an opportunity to be a winner winner chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. You'll win some of these wonderful prizes. And who doesn't like to hear their name called? I mean, it's very exciting. So I, I, I hope that I can figure out what went wrong. And if you did post a comment on 185 and you go and you look, you can see all the comments and you don't see yours. That means we didn't get it. It got lost in cyberspace. It's like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory when Mike TV pushes the button and he he goes and he, he wants to make a big chocolate bar, a little chocolate bar, only Mike TV wants to make himself big, little. I don't know if any of you watched the original Willy Wonka, but it's one of my favorite movies. And he's scattering all over the ceiling, all over the top until he focuses down into his little, the little Mike TV. And then he gets dropped into his mom's purse, but that's, anyway, somewhere, your comments are filtering. Did I digress? Somewhere your co comments are filtering in cyberspace and I just don't know where they are. So if you go to YouTube 185 and you haven't watched it, well, happy day. You still have an opportunity to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. And if you have watched it and you did post a comment and you don't see your comment, it hasn't been approved yet. That's because I don't have any more comments to approve. So this is your opportunity to go back and post another comment and have another chance to win two chances on this YouTube and on 185. All right, I'm gonna put on my glasses, although I don't have any anything to read. Usually I'm putting on my glasses and announcing some strange name, but <laughs> or a name that's not strange at all, but I just can't get the pronunci pronunciation right. I'm gonna tilt down, we're gonna get started for today. And right now downstairs, there is a make and take going on. I'm sitting in front of a all the girls who have come in to do the free make and take. If you are local, please come join us on a Saturday, not next Saturday. Please come join us on a Saturday and do a free make and take. We would absolutely love, love, love to have you. All right, I'm gonna tilt on down and show you what they're doing downstairs right now. And then we're gonna roll into the Do Crafts Cut and Emboss folders and all the different things you can do with them. I hope this kind of goes and makes you think even more about what you can do with your own embossing folders. Okay, down we go. Good to see you, bye. <laughs> Tilting on down. And, nope, wrong way, sorry. Zooming on in just a little bit. I know we're so high tech here. <laughs> no extra lighting, no over the head camera, but it all works, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, so here is the make and take that they're doing downstairs. And this is one of the new Do Crafts cut and emboss embossing folders. It's an actual embossing folder that has cutting elements built into it. Right now, I think they're the only ones that people say that they've seen Anna Griffin, but I've never seen Anna Griffin embossing folders that have cut the, 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 the die cuts built into it. They may, but I, I haven't seen them. So for all I know, Ducrafts is the only company that's carrying them and it's under their X-Cut brand. So it's under their X-Cut brand. They're manufactured by Ducrafts under their X-Cut brand. And we carry a lot of the X-Cut dies. They're very pretty, very affordable and work great. So I'm going to start by showing you one of these folders. Here it is. And immediately you can see that things are different than a typical embossing folder. First off, a typical embossing folder doesn't have a white outline anywhere on it. It's just translucent. These have got those little white pieces because when you open it up, that is where the cuts are. Those are a wafer die embedded into the embossing folder which means when we use it, it's going to emboss and cut all at the same time. Now they also give you their little logo. That tells you that that's facing up. That's facing up. That's what you want to see when you send it through your machine is that little logo. And several of you made a very good suggestion. I need to get my, on my Simply Refined embossing folders, I need to get my logo so you know which way is up. I forgot about that. Good idea. Thank you for all of those suggestions. I greatly appreciate it. Now, I'm going to start by using the Sizzix Texture Boutique machine. 
It's our cute little machine here. It only does embossing folders. That's all this machine does. It's lightweight, it's portable, but it won't let you die cut at all. It will only let you do A2 and A6 size embossing folders. And if you're more a card maker and not so much a die cutter, although I, but anyway, if you're more a card maker who likes just embossing folders, you don't want to get into die cutting, this is a nice little handy tool for you. We have it for on sale for $31.99. It's a, a big shot machine isn't that much more money, but if you are on a budget and all you want to do is emboss, then this is a this is a happy little tool for you and it it will get you started. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the plates over comes with two plates it also comes with a couple shims and you're going to need these two plates every single time you use this machine these are two peas in a pod they got to go together it's um bread and butter it's applesauce and pork chops <laughs> that takes me back to my brady bunch days <laughs> so these go together and you use them together now this has cutting feature remember I said there's a cutting feature is the cutting feature going to work in your texture boutique no it's just going to let you emboss but I want to show you how it will look should you decide to buy these and you only have this machine I want to show you what can be done with them so I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab a piece of my coordinations cardstock and I'm playing with pastels today this is coordinations it is a color core cardstock that means if I tear it there's a different color in the center so if I sand it that lighter color is going to come through. So it's a color core cardstock. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, now it's got a texture to it, so I want that texture facing me. So I'm gonna put it right into my folder, close it up just like you were doing any other normal embossing. Then I've got my two little plates for my Texture Boutique machine. And the way the plates work is that the directions are always meant to face each other. You don't want to be able to read the directions. If you've got your embossing folder like this and you can read your directions, no, I want you to turn it inward so that you can't see them. Now again, this is a handy little machine, especially if you are a teacher or at church or at a senior center because it is so lightweight, it is so easy to use, it doesn't cost a fortune, and allows you to make beautiful embossings. Now I'm gonna send it on through and I'm just rolling and you see how easy it rolls. So there's really no pressure to it at all. And then I'm gonna open it up and you're gonna see maybe I can't tell on the camera you're gonna see that it embossed but it did not now it wants to cut out it does it really does want to cut out but it just isn't going to and you're not going to use a shim to force it this machine is not meant to cut it's meant to emboss but you're saying Stacy how, how can you even see what's on there what you know why would I want to use that with my machine well wait <laughs> hold on just a moment <laughs> okay I have got my sand it gadget, my trusty dusty sand it gadget. And this is just a nice little sanding block. It's just the right grit for paper. Some people will use an emery board or a, a sandpaper that they find in the, their garage. Just be careful that the grit's not too hard um, so that it bites too much into the paper. Because it's a color core paper, I can sand it. And where that embossing is higher, the, the sanded gadget's going to hit it and knock off some of that paper, exposing the embossing feature. So I'm just going to get right in there 
and give a really nice sand. Now you can go more sanding, less sanding. It's really up to you. I'm going to use my, my cleanup cloth. I've got a glitter cleanup cloth. We sell this. It's called a glitter cleanup cloth. It's huge. It's huge. And it not only cleans up the sanding off of your, um, off of your craft mat, but it cleans up glitter and embossing powder and a host of other things. I, I use it all the time. So I'm just going to give it a nice sanding until I'm happy with it. There, I think that's good. Wipe it down. Okay, now can you see a little bit better where the embossing is? But I'm not done. Because that butterfly isn't going to come out, I want to accentuate that butterfly. Because normally it would pop right out because we'd be die cutting it out. But the Texture Boutique will not let you die cut. But I still want you to be able to use these folders because they're absolutely gorgeous. So what am I going to do? I am going to take my Memento ink. I'm going to take my Memento ink. I cannot find my makeup sponges anywhere. I think I might be out. So I'm just going to use, I, I've got a little cotton pad here. You can use a, um, a brush stick. You can, I'm just, you know, it's kind of like whatever you got handy. And I'm going to add a little bit of color to my butterfly. Now I'm not being, I'm just making sure I stay inside my lines. I want to stay inside the butterfly, but the butterfly is pretty big, so you've got lots of room. Okay. I think that's pretty good. And now you're saying, well, okay. Eh. All right, all right, we're getting there. <laughs> Okay, remember this from 185? This has become my new best friend. This is from uh, Tonic Studios. It's a brand new Nouveau product, and it really has, I, I absolutely love it. What is it? It's this glittery, chunky glue that dries like this. I mean, really, we used it in the, in the make and take last week, and people were astounded at how quickly they were able to put it on, and it dried like that. That means you're not putting it on and then setting it over and hoping you do not do this, which is me because I end up with glitter all wet, stickles and all sorts of stuff anyway. But this has become my new best friend. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to draw a little line. And then I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to schmutz it. And I'm going to stay within the little line of my butterfly, the little outline, because you can see the outline beautifully. Since it didn't cut all the way through, it left a beautiful little embossing. And I'm going to put it all the way around. Now, because my ink was still just a little bit wet, it's kind of getting on my finger. But that's what I want because I'm kind of smearing it with my little glitter. And it's making it even, it's spreading it a little bit and giving it almost a watercolor effect without even touching watercolor. So I just want a little, oh see, it's almost dry. I know, is that crazy? It was the craziest thing ever. And right now the only place you're gonna find it is Scrapbooking Made Simple. Now it added a little bit of a gloss to it. The butterfly is far easier to see now, isn't it? It's added a little bit of a gloss to my butterfly. It's added a little bit of bling to my butterfly. I could take some pearls and put some pearls down the center. I could, I, 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 you have options. I mean, you have lots to do with it. I can mat it and get it onto, gosh, do I have a mat somewhere? Not quite the same color, but I got anything over here that's pretty? Uh, not so much. <laughs> Yeah, not so much. So I could mat it. Maybe that's not so bad. 
Oh, that's better. Yeah, that's better. I could mat it and then put it onto my card and decorate it up. And like I said, maybe add a few little bling down the center of the body, maybe a couple bling at the very top where his antenna are, but I have made a very pretty and very easy card using my Texture Boutique and my Do Crafts Cut and Emboss folder. And I didn't cut it at all. So I'm just gonna take that really quickly and I'm just gonna freehand this and throw some Stacy tape on the back of it because I might as well mat it. I'll take it downstairs and show it off. Now I would definitely use more Stacy tape than what I'm using, but I just want to get it onto my mat. It's dry. I know, crazy, huh? And it adds a little bit of gloss and a little bit of bling. Because the bling doesn't have an undertone, it's not gold bling or silver bling, it's just kind of this rock candy, crystal clear yumminess. Yeah, still doesn't look good on there. <laughs> but I'm good to go. And that is using my cute little Texture Boutique machine. Now, um, I think it retails for $39.99. We had it on a Black Friday special, so those of you who got it on the Black Friday special have it for that price, and right now I believe it's $31.99 is what we have it on sale for. It does not ship for free. There is an additional charge for shipping this, just like our Big Shot machines. They don't ship for free. We can't afford it's just too bulky and too heavy. We can't we can't afford it, but it's a nominal charge. I think it's $7.95 to ship it. So just to give you an idea that if you, oh, I have one in pink. If you do have that machine, you can still use these folders. Okay, great. All right, I am going to move on. Now I'm gonna bring over my Big Shot machine and we're gonna play with my Big Shot machine for a little bit. Let me put my paper back where I found it. And I think the first thing I wanna do is show you these folders with white paper. Now I'm gonna tell you that the paper you use is kind of important. You don't wanna use a paper that's too heavy. I'm using my simply defined 80 pound paper. I am not using 100 pound paper. I'm using 80 pound paper because we're asking this little folder not just to emboss, but to cut too. So um, if you've got 80 pound paper, try what you have and see if it works. I'll tell you, sometimes you gotta get in there with your little fussy scissors and help a few of them out if you're using heavier paper, but if not, 80 pounds seems to be a good rule of thumb. Now to do it, all you gotta do is put your paper in, close it up, bring your machine on over. I have got my small multi-purpose platform and we carry these, we carry the original size. It was brought back. Uh, Sizzix had discontinued them for several years. They have brought them back. You can get them here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. You're going to open it to tab one because tab one shows you embossing folders. I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna put down a do not cut plate. I'm gonna put my folder down, put down another cut plate, and I'm gonna send it on through. And this is where having a smaller multi-purpose platform is nice because the larger one that comes with the machines now is really long. So here I've rolled it through and now I'm going to take it and I'm going to rotate it just like we do our intricate dies and send it back on through. Move this out of the way, open it up, and well, you can see the butterfly is out, and then all of your little bits and pieces 
kind of pop on out. And if you're having trouble with one, then you just get your little tweezers out, your fussy tweezers or your fussy scissors, and just get the little piece right out. Every machine is a little bit different. Yours may just fall right on out. Oh, this one wants to, there we go, there's one antenna, and how about the other one? Nope. So I'm just going to go in there and poke it right on out. And now it's out. My little flower, my little flower. So let's just put this on paper and show you. That's what it looks like when it's done out of white, which is nice. It's pretty, but there's so much more that we can do with it. If you want to keep it very simple, this is keeping it very, very simple. I want to take it to the next level and I still want to use white paper. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put this one to the side and I'm going to grab another sheet of white paper. And then of course you've got all of these little pieces here that have popped out that you can play with all your little tiniest little dragonfly. I don't even know if you can see that, if it zooms in or not. Tiny little dragonfly. Look at this tiny little butterfly. That all popped out of my cut and emboss folder. So now I'm going to take it up a step. And how am I going to do that? I am going to ink up my folder. Yes, I'm going to ink it up. <laughs> Again, I am just using Memento ink. Do drop size. Easy peasy. They're like $2.29. There's 36 colors. They allow you to have a lot of color for a little money. And I'm going to ink my folder. I can hear some of you going, oh, but trust me, it will be okay. I'm just going to ink it all the way up. Now you could absolutely do this if you had the cut and emboss. It won't cut it out, but you could ink it. So when I think I've got it all inked up, I'm going to put my paper right into my folder, close it up so that I can see the logo. So I can see the logo. Bring back over my Big Shot machine. Put it down and send it on through. Roll it once. Rotate it. And roll it a second time. Again, using a, an 80 pound paper. If you've got 60 pound paper, try that. It'll cut, should cut without a problem. If you want to try 100 pound paper, give it a whirl. So there's my little butterfly. And then I can pop out my little pieces. And I can use them because they're already inked. Look at how, you could even leave them in there if you wanted. You don't have to pop them out if you don't want. You could certainly leave them in there. This one I'm just going to leave and I'm going to flip him up so that it looks like he's flying. But how cute are these little tiny pieces that are inked? I'm going to trim my trim it on down. Just so my outside blue edges are gone. And then I'm going to grab my blue paper. And now look what I've done. All I did was ink it. And I could pull this one out if you really want me to. 
All I did was ink it. Now, you're saying, but does it, does it change the color of your folder? Yes, it will. You take your baby wipe and you just wipe it right on down. Are my little butterflies in my flowers going to be a slight tinge of blue? Yes. If I use pink, will they have a slight tinge of pink? Yes. Does it hurt the folder? Absolutely not. Does it look stunning when it's done? Absolutely. But we're not done. So then you remember it gave me my little butterfly my little butterfly, because that's what popped out of the center. So I'm going to take my memento ink, and I'm just gonna edge it. I'm just gonna edge, add a little bit of ink to my butterfly. Just kind of edge it a little bit. Distress it, whatever, whatever you wanna call it. Again, freehand. You guys use your trimmer, <laughs> so you've got a nice straight line. Mine is not so straight, but that's okay. Put it down with my Stacy tape, and this is a double-sided tape. It's a double-sided adhesive that's super strong, and it holds glitter, and it holds beads, and it holds paper, and it holds acrylic, and it holds chipboard, but it's really affordable, and it does a really beautiful job in keeping everything where you want it to be. You can even hem your pants if you want to. In a pinch, we we hemmed, hemmed. We put together one of my shop hop, the shop that did not hop dresses when, when we needed <laughs> to use it. So there it is. But don't forget, I've got my white butterfly. Now I can take my white butterfly and put a little Stacy tape right on the back of my white butterfly. Because it popped out, you might as well use it, right? It came out of the white cardstock. And have it have it just like that. Ta-da! I love this look. I love this look. But what if we wanted to go bam? <laughs> Sorry, Emerald. Don't mean to take from you and copy from you. I got to give you credit for the bam because that is you. Take a little bit of our glitter and just put it right on our butterfly just to give it a little bit of bling bling, but not too much bling bling. And again, it adds a slight gloss finish to it while putting that crystal clear glitter on it. And then pop up. And now I've got it even a little bit nicer. And then I could take my, my Nouveau glitter accents is what they call it. And I could go and do a few of my others. And if I wanted to, I could take my little, my little guy and I could put him flying someplace else and pop him up because he cut out and he's in the same blue. How cool is that? Love, love, love these folders. Only folders that, that I know of that let you emboss and cut at the same time and look at what you can do. I think from the packaging, and you know me, I have a hard time with packaging because I want you to be able to kind of get a better idea of what you can do. 
I love you, Dan. Dan the Duke Craft Man. But gosh, couldn't you put some pretty samples on the back instead? <laughs> you know, maybe move this down here and put some pretty something so that so that when a customer is shopping in a retail store, because not everybody, you know, shops online and not everybody is an SMS in-store peep. But gosh, I think this looks so much prettier. Now I could be biased. Yeah, I did just make it. But I think this looks so much better than that. Just saying. Just like everybody gave me a suggestion about how I need to put my name, uh, the Simply Refined name on the bottom of my embossing folder. I think that is lovely. And it was easy. It didn't take anything but a piece of white paper, ink that you guys probably already own. And if it's not memento, that's okay. Pull out your Lawn Fawn, pull out your Avriel, pull out your Versa Fine. What do you have? Try it. It might just work beautifully. And if you wanted to watercolor this as opposed to edging it, fine, it's a white piece of paper. So pretty. So this is using white paper, inking up, inking up the side of the folder that has the die on it, putting it through, sending it through, and letting the ink do the work. Letting the ink do the work. Okay. Are we ready to move on to the next thing I want to show you? Because the next thing I want to show you is also really, really good. <laughs> okay, I better find the lids. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to get a little bit more in depth with it. I want to show you something else that can be done. Oh, I know all of you are going to say, are you really throwing those away? Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. I'm so sorry, but I have about a million little little dragonflies flying around right now. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is how to use more than one paper to make a beautiful embossing. How to, how to make it pop even more, especially if you have scraps of patterned paper. All right, so I am going to take another one of my another one of my coordinations and I'm going to pull a pink. And again, remember this is um, this is color core paper. Color core means that if you tear it, it it has a different color on the inside. White core, well any double-sided paper you have is white core and if you tear it, it's white on the inside and standard cardstock is solid core. So if you tear it, it's the same color all the way through. And those are really your main types of different types of paper. White core paper, color core paper, and then typical cardstock where if you tear it, it's the same shade all the way through. Okay, so I've got my, I've got my paper, my coordinations paper. I'm going to give this just a really quick clean. Make sure that it's all out. See, this does not bother me. I, it, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, so I'm good with it. I'm going to line up my paper. I'm going to bring over my Big Shot machine. And I'm going to send it on through. Roll it through one way, rotate it, and send it back. And remember, I'm using the original size multi-purpose platform that was brought back. Your platform might be the longer platform that comes with the machines. If it is the longer platform, it's still the exact same thing. You're still going to open it up. To, you're not going to use tab two. You're going to open it up to tab one. You're going to see an embossing folder down there and you're going to know that's the tab to use. Regardless if it's the short one like I've got or the long one. The short one does happen to be a little handier. Can you do this with a magnetic platform? 
No. Do you need a precision base plate? No. Do you need a squishy and a knock knock? No. Do you know what a squishy and a knock knock is? Because I don't have it here, I'm not using it. I can't show it to you. But uh, <laughs> but go back to another YouTube. I use squishy and knock knocks all the time. <laughs> All you need is paper and your machine. All right, pop that bad boy out. There's my butterfly. Pop out some of my pieces. Now remember, I used a color core cardstock and if I had used white core, I could sand it as well. White core sands beautifully. I'm going to use my little fussy scissors to get that little antenna out. And there we go. Easy peasy, mac and cheesy. Do I have everything out? Why, by George, I do believe I have everything out. And there it is. But I want to dress it up even more. So I'm going to take a piece of pretty background paper. And I have chosen, I think I'm going to go with this one. Now. You don't need to mat your whole card with that background paper. You really don't. You only need to mat what's going to be seen. So unless you want the mat to come out like this one did. This one I had the mat come all the way out past the edge. But if you don't want that, you just need to cut yourself a piece that's going to be big enough to cover the area that you want, which is nice because then, like I said, you can go back and you can find the scraps that you have. And I'm just freehanding. Covers everything. A piece that big. How many of us have pieces <laughs> this big or have a little piece of one color and another little piece of another color and another? You can put behind this all the different colors that you want. It doesn't have to be all the same color. If you've got your scraps, pull them out and use them to back it. Then you can take another color mat. Oh, then you can take a lighter mat and now you've got Oh, pretty. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tape this to the back. And I'm going to grab my Stacy tape. Now there's a lot of tape on my rolls. Just so you know, we sell them in everything from one eighth of an inch, so super thin, all the way up to six inches, and there's about 85 feet per roll. So a I think a quarter inch retails for $3.99. So while we love tape runners, you certainly can't beat the price on these because they'll do everything a tape runner will do and more. Okay, so I've backed it. But now what am I gonna do? Now I'm gonna take another piece of paper. Let's find another piece of paper. Okay, I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna put this aside and put this aside. I'm going to grab this piece of paper and all I want to cut, I don't care about the embossing, I just want to die cut. So let's cut me a little bit of this off. I don't need the whole thing. Hopefully I cut enough. Yep, plenty. Put it on there so I can see. So I want to cut these pieces out. Now if you have a piece big enough and you want to do the whole thing and that way you can use this and pull these pieces out and do a reverse, well let me do that. I'll do that for you in just a minute. I'm going to roll this through though. So I'm going to roll this through. Send it through. Oh, it didn't go. Does anybody know why it didn't go? See, look, it won't let me go. It's saying, my machine's saying, uh-uh, no way, Jose. Why didn't it let me go through? I'm not on tab one. 
And that's the beauty of a big shot machine. It won't let you do what you're not supposed to do. It will tell you, it tells you, no, don't force it, don't try. It should go through and see, aha, uh -huh, see, look at how easy that is. It's the nice thing about the machine, you, it, it tells you. Rotate it and send it on back. Oh, it's starting to pour. Sunny California is now rainy California. Yay, we need the, we need the rain. <laughs> oh, we need the rain. All right. So I've got that beautiful butterfly. Now I've got all the little pieces too. And I could take those pieces and fit those pieces back into these pieces if I wanted to, but I'm gonna take that beautiful butterfly. And I'm gonna put a little bit of Stacy tape on the back. And put it on down. pop my wings. Oh, how pretty is that? So now I've used a piece of, and I didn't sand this. This is color core paper and I haven't sanded it. I've just left it the way it is. And I backed it with a scrap of paper. I die cut out a piece of paper that kind of coordinates. And then I could, I got a card anywhere? Hmm, I could back it on a card base. And put it on my card and make a beautiful card with it. How simple is that? How crazy easy is that? And it's just using paper that's all we've used so far. Nothing more than paper and a little bit of ink. And uh, because I can't find my makeup sponges, a cotton towelette for your makeup to clean your makeup off of. Walmart, you can get them, it comes in a big long sleeve. You get enough to last you a lifetime. If you have brush sticks, you could use brush sticks. How pretty is that? And then I could take it and back it on another sheet and mat it. And like I said, I still have this piece. I could pop out the rest of the little, the little butterflies and the little dragonflies. And if I didn't want to necessarily put them back where they came out of, I could just layer them on top and add them in because they're gonna pop out anyway. And if I really wanted to sand it, I did one earlier. Here's one where I have sanded. Can you see the sanding? So I sanded and the lighter color pink came through. And on this one, I put a little bit of the Nouveau behind the wings, not on top because I didn't want it to be blingy, but I didn't want, I wanted to catch your eye when you're moving the card. And by putting it on the paper underneath, and I just put it on with my finger, it kind of catches your eye. So I thought that was really cool. So there's sanded and there's not sanded. You can do it either way. It's up to you. What makes your heart happy? Here I used a little bit darker background. Here I used a little bit lighter background. You have paper. And because these cut and emboss at the same time, you can do so much more with them. They're not a typical embossing folder in any way, shape, or form. They are lovely. And you can make the most gorgeous cards just using paper. That's it, paper. Well. And if you like a little bling or if you like a little ink, but you should have 
in your stash or in your friend's stash, in your crafting buddy's stash, you guys should be able to come up with some ink. This I would buy. I won't lie to you. <laughs> this I would buy. <laughs> and, and, and paper. And then go to town and make beautiful, beautiful things that you can give away and it hasn't cost a fortune and you're using up the supplies, the paper, especially the paper, that you already own. White paper. White paper. Awesomeness with white paper. All right. And so now I'm going to just quickly do a pattern because I want you to see so I've got just a piece of pattern paper and I am going to let you know I am using the Maya paper. This is um this is summertime. All the pattern paper that I'm using is Maya paper. It's the summertime collection. I don't know how much of it we have left, but that is what I am that's what I'm using is the Maya summertime paper and that the it, the pinks and the blues, all of that is out of that one pack. So I've grabbed a piece of pattern paper. I'm thinking is that going to be a good pattern? I don't know. Ooh, I think I like that one better. Ooh, maybe I like the blue better. Okay, I need to just go. <laughs> I just need to do it. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim my paper down just a little bit, not completely, because I can take my trimmer and trim it down after I'm done embossing so that I get rid of everything I want to get rid of. Put my paper in. I want to be able to see the white. I want to be able to see the logo. Bring over my embossing or my big shot machine. I left it open to tab one this time. I've got my do not cut plate down. I've got my my embossing folder face up. The paper that I want to see on my card should be also facing me and I'm going to send it on through. One, rotate, and send it on back. And remember, the heavier the paper is, the little more difficult it is to get some of those fine detail pieces out. And you may every now and then have to use your, oh, what did I put them? <laughs> you may have to use your fussy scissors or your fussy tweezers. These are my Simply Refined products, my fussy scissors and my fussy tweezers. It's got my logo on it. It was very, very, very exciting for me the first time I saw these with my logo on it. I, I just, I almost, I, I almost lost it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pull it out. There's my butterfly, double-sided, because I use double-sided paper. Pull out some of my little bits and pieces that I'm sure all of you would save because they're in pattern paper and you can use them again on something else or you just flip them over. Just flip them over because it's pattern paper and now you've got flowers and dragonflies in other colors. Butterfly popped right on out. Another butterfly and then you can sand it. Sand a gadget. And you'll see it's sanding to white. It's a pattern paper, double-sided. So when you sand it, it sands to white. Any double-sided pattern paper, any double-sided pattern paper, white core, white in the center, so it's sandable. I'm going to trim this down. Now, I would take my fancy trimmer, which is actually my inexpensive titanium Westcott trimmer. We had those at a doorbuster for like $10 one year. They're a great little trimmer. I am sorry we can't ship them. They're just too bulky for us. But boy, they were a great door buster. I think it was a $36 trimmer that we had for 10 bucks a couple years ago. Trim it down. And 
And then I have something beigey. Anything else beigey? No, not so much. No. Okay, so <laughs> so there it is, sanded. <laughs> I don't see a background that I'm happy with. I will just use the stars that it came with because <laughs> that's the opposite side. So there it is. And then of course, you've got your butterfly and I could maybe edge that just a little bit with some Distress Ink or some browns and put it up on there and tape it all down. And this time I used patterned paper. Now what I forgot to show you is in this one, actually this one, remember it cut out the butterfly from the pink. Remember it cut that butterfly out from that pink? If I was making this into a card, I would then use this to either seal my envelope up, because you can use that as an envelope sealer. You can decorate your envelope with it, or you can put it right in the center and put your to and from on there. I'll put it down there. Oh, you could take the cute little ones. Oh my gosh, how darling would that be? Oh, put your cute little ones in there too and decorate around with the cute little fallouts because you've got that extra, you've got that extra piece of pink because it came right out of the, when you sent it through the first time and then you can use it for the inside for your card or an envelope. Same thing with here. I could just take a white butterfly, white butterfly, edge it up a little bit give it a little color put that in the center and then use this butterfly on the inside of my card or on my envelope because that's what cut out so many uses so many different ways to do things with so many different papers from just using the texture boutique and getting your butterfly to come through that way how cute is that to inking up your folder on white paper to get this to using a combination of papers where you've got the coordinations that can be sandable and you're using scrap paper to using pattern paper that you have hanging around and embossing it and sanding it so the detail comes through. It all can be done with these folders. They are really wonderful. Okay. I have got beautiful samples to show you, although I have to say I am just, I might keep this one for me. <laughs> I'm really happy with the way this one came out. But I have got beautiful, beautiful samples to show you, including the one I just did. And then I'm going to show you, well, I'm going to show you the product first, because really there's not much to show. I'm going to assume that you already have some form of an ink. And we will leave the Nouveau on a YouTube Yummy. It's $6.99, less 20%. It goes a really long way, and it dries like in a heartbeat. By the time you're done doing, you can put this side on, and then you do this side, this side's already dry. It just dries like a heartbeat. And like I said on this one, I just put it a little, just a little bit on the underneath. And I just smooched it in, just so that when you move it, it gives you that little bit of oomph. All right, so there are six of them. There's the butterfly that I've been working with. I don't know what this one's called, but it's got that bracket opening. I'll show you samples with it. This one has got a darling little fairy down in the corner. 
but we covered up the fairy. <laughs> One of the samples that's downstairs we weren't feeling the fairy for one of the samples so we just cut it out and, and covered it up with flour <laughs> so if you don't like the flare fairy you don't have to use it you just trim it right out the circle and then put an embellishment there and poof no little fairy the window the window is stellar it is beautiful because it actually cuts a window that opens and embosses oh my gosh here we've got like almost like a, 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 a little girl or a bride and, and then the butterfly. The butterfly doesn't pop all the way out. The butterfly's wings just lift up like she's catching the butterfly. So pretty. So these are the sets we have and they're all 20% off. We do have an I want it all on that. I want to show you some of the samples though. Okay, so this one is one of the make and takes that they're doing downstairs right now. And that's a guy card. Did I show the guy card? Oh, here. This one too. This is for guys. Well, it can be for girls and steampunk, but we did a guy card because anytime you get product that allows you to do something for a guy, we utilize it because it's they're far and few in between sometimes. So there's one sample. Here's another one. So everybody downstairs has their choice of the color combinations they want to do. They get to do whatever makes their heart happy. Then we have the window and Yvette went all out. She backed it in vellum and she put little pearls for the handle and you open it up and it says, happy birthday. Is that so cute? The window is darling and it does. It cuts out all the little hearts and the flowers and the butterflies. And then you open the window up and happy birthday. And now it's perforated on the side. So if you wanted to take the windows out entirely and just have an archway, you could do that too. Love the little happy birthday. Okay, then we have another happy birthday and this one has the little fairy down below and it has all the little pieces that are die cut out. The center here is die cut out. And all we did was take, again, a piece of color core paper, sanded it, put a piece behind it, and a bow, and put happy birthday. How simple is that? But it looks so good. Okay, love this one. Mm-hmm. We cut into the card. Now, I'm gonna tell you, my 200 pound card base will cut the centerpiece. It will be difficult to get the little bits and pieces out of my 200 pound card base. It will cut the piece out, but it's gonna be a little, you may have to take your scissors and fussy cut some of these little ones out because 200 pound card bases are really heavy. And then we just cut it again, put it on the inside. Is that beautiful? love this card. I'm hoping that it's not blurry. Okay, this one. Oh, this is the one where the wings pop. So this one, Yvette did on pattern paper and she sanded it and she put Clearly Glitter. That's my Clearly Glitter product, my Simply Defined Clearly Glitter and just made a simple, beautiful card. And the Clearly Glitter is even behind the little wings. Here's just as simple as can be. Took a piece of white paper, took a bunch of different inks, just kind of smooched it around. You could just do watercolor. You could use your Daniel Smith inks. You just want to make a background. You tape your background down, die cut and emboss your white piece of paper, lay it right over the top. Basically, we made our own background paper. Instead of using something that we had in the store, we just made it. Then we have another window. Is that not beautiful? Is that not so lovely? And the, the folder, the folder did it all. Now we popped this up. Can you see how we use pop dots? 
to give a little more dimension so the window has a little bit of shadowing to it. That naturally happens when you pop it up from the matting paper. And she just used a little scrap piece of paper here. We didn't mat the whole thing in that because we've got pink behind it too. So those windows are just lovely. Think of the decoupage you could put down there. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Here we've inked the folder. Remember I showed you how we inked the folder? We inked it and die cut. And she put a little happy birthday to you. So we inked the folder. Here she used my glimmer sheets. Again, this is straight onto the card base. Straight onto the card base. And then she die cut the glimmer sheet for the butterfly in the center. And these did not pop out so well. So all she did was take my glimmer sheets and die cut out each little piece and stick it right on top of the white piece. Just so cute. Easy. Card base. Glimmer sheets. Cut and emboss folder from X Cuts by Do Crafts. Done. And then last but not least, well, no, I guess we have a few more. Here, see, she put the pearls down the center. So she's got the same paper underneath as she does on top. This is very similar to what we did. She didn't sand, she just used regular cardstock. But how lovely is that? And it's just paper and some pearls. Next we have what's darling for a little girl, make a wish. Okay, Yvette went in there and yes, it, it die cuts out or it, 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 uh, it embosses the little girl. Yvette fussy cut the little girl out, out of paper so she could lay it on top. <laughs> But the paper is this way. It's, uh, it's got this, this um, starry look to it. And then all the little die cuts that fall out and the center falls out and it says make a wish. Oh, and here we have another one. It's almost like a bride. This would be great for a wedding shower. Or, and you've got her. You've got the butterfly here and you've got her reaching up for it. All right. So these are cut and emboss folders. Really nice. They retail $9.50. They're on sale 20% off and we do have an I Want It All. We'll also have the Nouveau Glitter Accents still on sale because it really is just a very wonderful product we're the only ones that have it. We've got it for a little while by ourselves. Don't forget if you do have a textured boutique machine, absolutely you can play with these. There's no reason why you can't. Absolutely no reason why you can't. You just have to think outside the box a little bit. And remember, white paper, it's okay to ink up your folders. And it's okay to use patterned paper because you can sand it and that embossing is going to come up. You just have so many opportunities to do so many different things. All right, I'm gonna tilt on up. And I'm gonna say, whoop, not quite high enough. I'm gonna say, okay, this is me, Stacy, scrapbooking made simple. Where are you gonna find all of these great products? Well, if you don't find them at your local retailer, which right now you won't find them at your local retailer because we're the only ones that have them. So you're gonna go to scrapbookingmadesimple.com. You're going to look in the YouTube Yummies category and there's a link right on this video for you to click right on over. Now, this video is Friday, the 13th of January, 2017. So if you were watching this in 2018, gosh, I'm so sorry, the sale is over. <laughs> But stay tuned. We'll have another YouTube, but not next week. <laughs> so don't forget, I won't be YouTubing next week, but I will see you live from CHA. And you don't have to have a Facebook username or login to watch all the fun videos that we're going to do. All right, everybody. Have a great two weeks. I will miss you, but I'll, again, I'll see you on the floor at CHA. And hopefully, 
we have lots of exciting things to show you. I just don't know. I won't know until I get there. So it's always a lot of fun. All right. I'll see you next time. Scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Bye.